watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 151, Bootstrap, Progress Bars, and Next Pages. Guardians of the Galaxy was excellent. The Turtle movie? Meh, not so much. Okay, before we get into anything, whenever we talk about bootstraps, uh, we have to mention Bootstrap for X Pages, the great project that's on OpenNTF waiting for you now. And and I've got to give a big thanks to Mark Lusink and the effort he's put into that project. Um, I know he's got to kind of go through IBM for that, which is not always the most fun thing in the world. Uh, but he's stuck with it, and a, a new release came out recently for uh, boot support of Bootstrap 3.2, and it's a great project. I use it in the day job. It's easy to install, and it, it's better to do that project than to try to add Bootstrap manually. So I highly recommend you check that out. And, and even more so than that, I, I really recommend you go to the Daniel Friedrich blog, uh, and he might not be on your radar because I don't think he's on Planet Lotus, but he's a great ex-pager. He's a very good blogger, and I really enjoy reading his stuff. Um, his uh, blog is at xpagesandme.wordpress.com. And just this weekend, he put out a, a new post, Dabbling in Bootstrap and Fawn Awesome Part 6, Reuse Me, where he's doing some kind of custom controls um, for fields and stuff like that, which I actually tried to do myself, and, and, and I found it to be a little limiting, so I'm kind of interested in trying his approach and seeing if that works a little better. And, and, and I am trying to get him on uh, Notes 9. He's a, he's a great blogger. He's a, he's a tough negotiator, so I'm, I'm working on him. Um, but I, I have high hopes, and uh, if he's not on your radar, he should be, so ha add him to your RSS feed uh, if that's what you use, and, and, dub and definitely check out his site. Okay, today uh, I'm going to do a demonstration on building custom controls in X Pages to use Bootstrap progress bars. And this came straight from the day job, which is always nice when I need something for the day job and I can turn around for a show. So that, that, that works out pretty well for me, quite honestly. Um, but, but I do use this in the day job right now, and, and the users are, are really liking it. And uh, let's see how it works. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to build a custom control to let us use Bootstrap uh, progress bars. So let's first look at the documentation, because that's always a good place to start. So if we go to getbootstrap.com and, and the components section of that, and scroll down, we're going to see progress bars. This is a progress bar to go, you know, it's just a little, like, bar graph. Um, and you can have it with words inside as well. And it's very easy to build. You just need two divs. The first div is going to have a uh, class, this outer div of, of progress. And then there's an inner div that has a class of progress bar. And then it has some attributes, role, uh, current value, uh, a minimum value, and a maximum value. Um, and then the style is, is how far it actually goes. And this little span here is for a screen reader. But if you actually want to have the words or numbers appear in here, then you just kind of put that inside that inner div. So let's look at how that is built. So if I go into this uh, custom control called uh, progress bar, and I go to property definition, I'm going to pass in three values. A maximum value, a minimum value, and a current value. And notice they are all string. And it really does want string and not integers like you would expect to see or so. It, it really was not happy at me when I tried to pass in integers. And it said, uh, no soup for me. Okay, so if we come um, into, uh, let's go to the outline, and the first div is relatively easy, is it's going to be a style class progress. That's pretty much hard-coded. And then if we go to that second div, and rather than source, which confuses me a, a little bit ago when I practiced, we're going to go through the pretty pain, um, but we've got some attributes in here. So the first attribute is the role progress bar, okay, just like the documentation had. Uh, the second one is the, the current value, or what they call area value now. And I, I don't know why it's area, quite honestly, but it is. So, again, I'm converting everything to string that I pass in. And then there's the value minimum. And then there's the value maximum. And again, everything is to string. And if we scroll down here, if I do this right, Here it is. Okay, so we scroll down to the style. So we're going to compute the style. And this is the how far is the bar going to be colored in at. 
So we do do just a little math. We, we do a little test here to say if max value is over zero, because no one wants to divide by zero, because that just ruins everybody's day. And we're going to say a current value divided by max value, and then multiply that by 100. And then we're going to actually uh, return width. So we're actually going to build the, the, the text style class here. And then we're going to return that. And if uh, we somehow pass a zero in as the max value, then we're just going to return blank. And hopefully nothing blows up. And in style class, we're going to do a very similar computation. Is we're going to do the current value divided by the max value, turn that to a percentage. And then here it's going to get a little different. If the result is 100, then I'm going to pass back this style class, the success, or the green color. And otherwise, I'm going to pass back the blue color. And if we come back here and we look at this as it works, as so if we have 30, we can make this go bigger. And then if we have actually hit 75, uh, then it's green, 100% complete. Okay, so that's a very usable custom control that really didn't take that much work. Okay, now obviously I could pass that style in if I wanted to change the colors uh, before it got to this custom control, which you might want to do is, is add another property definition for that. Uh, I just didn't do that necessarily for this demo. Okay, so what I want to show you now is the stacked progress bar. And if we go back to the, uh, the documentation to see what that actually is, it's a single bar with multiple colors. It could be three or two or, or more than three. Um, and and I, I quite honestly, I'm like, well, that's dumb. I mean, what, what does that tell you? Uh, until uh, Declan Lynch came up with a real-world example, which made uh, absolutely perfect sense. So let's look at this. Oops, I don't want that. I want it here. So we look at the stack progress bar. Now, in my day job, I have a, a an X pages based iPad application that uh, is going to be using Bootstrap. Uh, funny uh, that that works out that way. And um, we do a lot of shipping of things from place to place. So, so given three categories of of items that are being shipped, of not shipped, in transit, and arrived. You know, let's say 15 items have not yet been shipped yet. They've not left. They've not left our warehouse. Let's say 10 are in transit and 8 have arrived at the destination. So if we refresh this, this gives the people at the destination a really good look at how many things have gotten there, what's in transit, and what hasn't even shipped yet, which may be a problem depending on what the date is. And as we change these values, which could come from server-side JavaScript or a managed bean, hint, hint, um, then we can change the graph live. And we could say this is 18. And we can say none are in transit. And then they can see at a glance where they, where they stand for getting all their items that they expect to get. So let's see how to build this. So if I go into this uh, custom control for, um, I call it a Bootstrap uh, Stacked Progress Bar. OK. we got some properties I'm going to pass in, but this one's a little different. Here I made a group. This is a property group, and the group has style, width, and order, because I want to be able to really control, um, and let's just do that there, left to right. Okay, so red or, or is, is most important to me, kind of, quite honestly, and then uh, we've got the blue, and then we've got the green. And if you notice, at, uh, on the demo, they have this like little blank space here, and I did not want that blank space, so I, I converted everything to a percentage of 100%, uh, and that's what, uh, oops, and that's what what got me out of that not having to deal with that blank space. So let's look at this. So, so I made this group of properties, and this is the key thing. I said allow multiple instances, so there could be three colors, there could be six colors. I can control the order of them. So I can pass in the style, and I can pass in the width of what the percentage uh, of each one is going to be. So let's go to our little outline here. And we're, we're first going to have this, this panel. And the panel is just going to have a style class of progress. And that's that equates to, you know, just like before, this outer progress. And then inside it is going to be a repeat. And what you want to make sure that, that you, you catch in the repeat control oops, is you can disable the output tag right here. 
Okay, so it, so it doesn't output an extra div because it, it did not like that. Uh, trust me on that. And the value, and I gave it, you know, I gave it, right now there's up to 30 we could have. So I gave it this traditional row data and row index. But if we look at the value of the repeat control, what's going on in here is, is I've got to go through all those properties, and I don't know how many there are going to be, right? But I, I know I want to go through all of them, and then I want to sort them. So I, I get an object, I just create a little variable, that is the composite data bar detail. So this is going to be basically an array of all those, however, if they have three, if they've got six, there's going to be, it's going to come back as an array. Then, oops, then I'm going to create a tree map, uh, which is what I'm going to use for the sorting uh, later on. And then I'm going to create an array list called data, and then some counters. And then I'm going to... Um, Oh, did I even use that object? All right, forget this. I think I didn't even use this this object. So I think that was the first thing I, I did, and I left that in there. So sorry about that. Um, so I got the tree map and the array list. So the array list is called data. And then I'm going to loop through data. And I'm going to count as I loop. And as I loop through each record, so that's each grouping um, from those composite data properties that you pass in on, on the page level, um, I'm going to, in my tree map, I'm going to put the order number first, because a tree map it sorts by the, the first value there. So it's going to sort by that, and then I'm going to put in the the array value. And that's going to have, and if we look at, uh, if we look at how this was used on the page, these custom properties, so that's going to have one of these. So we've got two we we're dealing with, really, style and width. And they all have that. Okay, okay. so if we come back in here. So we're looping through this, and I left some debug crap in here. Um, and then I'm going to total the width, because I needed to get a total. Um, and that's all this really, this first loop does, is, is give me a total so I know what the total value is, right? So this, this is just the math part of it or so. So whatever this equals to, 18 plus 14 plus 2, is I need to get that total, right? And then in another loop, that I make a, an, an iterator to go through the tree map at that point, is I take each of the value I passed in, and I figure that out uh, based on a 100%. Uh, so I divide what what is the percent of the current value of the total. And then I change that. So I update what's been passed in with that percentage. And again, you can figure it out. You're probably better at math than I am. Uh, it took me quite a while to figure that out, actually. But that's what allows me to not have any like little gray space like the documentation has. Okay, and then if we go forward in here to this computed field, so that now the computed field is a text, and, and, and don't miss this part, is this is a text field, uh, a lot of people do miss this, is I'm going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make this a div. So when this gets returned back, you know, from the server, it's going to be a div, because if you go back to the documentation, each one of these is a div. So I'm using a computed text field to output divs, right? And then, and then all I have to do is compute the style. So so in here, the style, which is how far it needs to go, is, is again, row data, which was in the repeat control, is going to be basically an array, an array object. So I'm saying, you know, get the width value. This is the width value that I modified to be based off 100% and return that. And then in the style, then whatever the style class was passed in, I'm returning that. I could have had return there if I was a little nicer about it. So row data, row data style, And that is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I'm not doing any text inside it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I could, uh, but I, I didn't want to, uh, quite honestly. And then you've got a stacked progress bar. And that's the demo. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.